According to a 2024 study by Gartner, 63% of organizations say they conduct risk assessment regularly. But when auditors ask to see those assessments, only 22% can produce documentation that actually meet compliance requirements. That means 41% of organizations think they are doing risk assessment, but they are actually just going through motions that won't hold up under scrutiny. Here's why this matters. If you're trying to break into cybersecurity, conducting risk assessment is one of the most valuable skills you can demonstrate. It appears in 73% of GRC job postings. It's required for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and virtually every other compliance framework. Most people learn risk assessment through theoretical training that doesn't prepare them for what the work actually looks like. They memorize risk metrics, they study frameworks, they understand concepts, but when they sit down to conduct an actual risk assessment for a real organization, they freeze because theory doesn't translate directly to practice. Now in the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through building a complete risk assessment from scratch. Now not theoretical, not generic, a real practical risk assessment you could use in an actual organization. I'm Tony Lopez Michael, a cybersecurity expert and career coach, and I've conducted hundreds of risk assessments across industries. Hit subscribe right now if you want content that shows you how the work actually gets done. It's free to subscribe, so hit that subscribe button. Now, let's build a risk assessment together, step by step. For this walkthrough, we're assessing a realistic scenario that covers the kinds of risk most organizations face. Our fictional company is CloudBooks, a 50-person SaaS startup that provides accounting software to small businesses. They store customer financial data in AWS. They have remote employees across three states, and they are pursuing SOC 2 certification to win enterprise customers. This scenario is common enough that what you learned here applies to hundreds of similar companies, but it's specific enough that we're doing real work, not generic theory. Before we start identifying risk, we need to establish context. This is where most people skip ahead and start listing risk immediately. That is backward. You need to understand three things first. What are the company's critical assets? For cloud books, that is customer financial data, their application source code, and their production infrastructure. Lose any of this and the business suffers materially. Now, what's the company's risk appetite? Their board has stated that they are willing to accept moderate operational risk to move fast, but they have zero tolerance for compliance violations or data breaches. That tells us how to prioritize. Now, what compliance requirements apply here? They need SOC 2 Type 2. They handle some HIPAA data for healthcare customers, and they are subject to state data breach notification laws. With that context established, now we can start identifying risk. Risk identification is where you list everything that could go wrong. And I mean everything. We'll prioritize later. Here is how professionals actually do this. We don't just sit in a room and brainstorm. We use systematic approaches. First approach is asset-based identification. For each critical asset, ask what could compromise it. Customer financial data could be stolen by external attackers that are exploiting vulnerabilities. It could be exposed through misconfigured cloud storage. It could be accessed inappropriately by employees. It could be lost due to system failures without backups. It could be disclosed accidentally through email or file sharing. That's five risks from one asset alone. Now, second approach is threat-based identification. Consider different threat actors and what they might do. External attackers might launch ransomware. Malicious insiders might steal customer data. Competitors might attempt corporate espionage. Nation state actors probably don't care about a small SaaS company. So we deprioritize that threat. Third approach is compliance-based identification. What risk would cause compliance failures? For SOC 2, risk include inadequate access controls, lack of encryption, insufficient monitoring, poor vendor management, and inadequate incident response. Fourth approach is historical analysis. What has gone wrong at similar companies? We research breaches in the SaaS industry. We find that common incidents include phishing, leading to compromised credentials, misconfigured cloud services, insider thread, third-party vendor compromises, and ransomware. Now, after using these four approaches, we have about 30 identified risks. That is normal for an organization this size. Now, here is what separates beginners from professionals. Documentation format. Yes, beginners write risk as vague concerns like data breach risk. That is useless. 
professionals write risk as specific scenarios with clear threats, vulnerability, and impact. For example, external attacker exploit unpatched vulnerability in production web application to gain unauthorized access to customer financial database, resulting in data breach affecting 10,000 plus customers, regulatory notification requirement, potential fines, and reputation damage. You see the difference? The second version is specific, measurable, and actionable. Now we have 30 documented risks. We need to prioritize them because you can't address everything simultaneously. Risk analysis requires evaluating two factors for each risk. Number one is likelihood and number two is impact. Likelihood is how probable is this risk to materialize. Impact is if it happens, how bad is the damage? Most organizations use a simple one to five scale for each. Some use low, medium, high. The specific scale matters less than consistency. Now let's analyze a few examples for CloudBooks. First risk, unpatched vulnerability exploitation. Likelihood is four out of five, which is high. Web applications are constantly targeted, and if patching is inconsistent, exploitation is probable. Impact is five out of five, which is critical. Data breach of customer financial data triggers compliance notifications, potential fines up to $500,000. Customer loss estimated at 30%, reputation damage lasting years. Risk score is 20, which is likely times impact. Second risk, employee laptop theft without encryption. Likelihood is 2 out of 5, which is low to medium. Theft happens occasionally, but not frequently. Impact is 4 out of 5, which is high. If device contains customer data and is not encrypted, this triggers breach notification for affected customers. Potential fines, reputation damage, risk score is 8. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough. Or feeling like you've hit a wall i get it that is why i created something more than just these videos you're watching something structured practical and focused on real action it's called the five day cyber security job challenge this isn't just content you'll binge and forget we're talking hands-on learning real skills and daily guidance two hours a day for five days it's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's, where I personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you are ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below, you can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. Third risk, phishing attack compromising employee credentials. Likelihood is 5 out of 5, which is very high. Phishing attacks target SaaS companies constantly. Success rate is about 30% without proper training and technical controls. Impact is 4 out of 5, which is high. Compromised credentials could lead to unauthorized access to customer data, system compromise, or lateral movement. Risk score is 20. After scoring all 30 risks, we rank them. Anything scoring 15 or higher is critical or high priority. Scores 8 to 14 are medium, under 8 is low. Now, CloudBooks has 6 critical or high risk, 14 medium risk, and 10 low risk. Now comes the crucial part that determines whether this risk assessment actually improves security or just sits in a binder. For each risk, you need a treatment strategy. There are 4 options. Mitigate, accept, transfer, or avoid. Mitigate means implement controls to reduce likelihood or impact. Accept means acknowledge the risk and consciously choose not to address it. Transfer means use insurance or outsourcing to shift the risk. Avoid means change business processes to eliminate the risk entirely. Let's walk through our high priority risk. First risk is on patch vulnerability exploitation. Treatment strategy is mitigate. Specific actions include implement automated vulnerability scanning weekly, establish patch management process with service level agreement, deploy web application firewall for all defense in depth, and conduct penetration testing quarterly. Owner is the CTO. Timeline, 
is 90 days of full implementation. Cost is $15,000 for scanning tools plus WAV subscription plus pen testing. Residual risk after mitigation. Likelihood drops from 4 to 2. Impact remains 5. New risk score is 10 which is medium. Second high risk is phishing attack. Compromising credentials. Treatment strategy is mitigate. Specific actions include implementing MFA on all systems, especially email and cloud admin. Deploy email security gateway with anti-phishing capabilities. Conduct quarterly phishing simulations and then implement security awareness training with monthly micro trainings. Owner is head of IT. Timeline is 60 days from technical controls. Ongoing for training. Technical controls ongoing for training. Cost is $8,000 initial plus $3,000 per year ongoing. Residual risk likely drops from 5 to 3. Impact drops from 4 to 2 because MFA prevents most unauthorized access even with compromised credentials. New risk call now is 6 which is low. Notice what we're documenting. Notice that specific actions, ownership, timeline, cost and residual risk after treatment. See, this is what makes a risk assessment actionable instead of theoretical. Now here is a critical insight for people trying to break into GRC. This prioritization and treatment planning is where you demonstrate business judgment, not just security knowledge. A junior person says we should fix all the risk. That's not realistic. A professional says we have six critical risks requiring $75,000 in controls and 90 days to implement and then says that we should address these areas immediately as they protect our most critical assets. These two can wait until next quarter when we have more budget. This one we should accept because the cost to mitigate exceed the probable impact. The risk-based decision making. That is risk-based decision making. That is what executives pay for. The risk assessment isn't done until it's documented in a format that stakeholders can actually use. You need an executive summary. That is one or two pages. Okay. This includes overview of assessment scope and methodology, number of risks identified, categorized by priority, top 5 to 10 risks requiring immediate attention, recommended budget, and timeline for risk treatment, and high level risk heat map showing current versus residual. See, this is what your CEO and board members read. It needs to be business focused, not technical. You also need a detailed risk register in spreadsheet or a JRC2 format documenting everything about each risk. Risk ID, risk statement, category, risk affected, threat source, vulnerability, existing controls, current likelihood and impact, risk call, treatment strategy, plan, control, owner timeline, cost, residual, likelihood and impact after treatment, and status. This is your working document. It gets updated as risk are treated and new risk emerge. Now, here's what makes documentation valuable. Documentation tells a story about how you are managing risk, not just what risk exists. So, when auditors or executives read your risk assessment, they should understand what you're protecting and why it matters. What could go wrong? How likely and impactful each risk is? What you're doing about it? And how you're measuring progress? That's a narrative that turns a list of risk into a risk management program. Now here is what beginners miss. Risk assessment is not a one-time project. It's a continuous process. The risk you identify today will change. New threats emerge. Your environment evolves. Controls you implement might not work as expected. New businesses initiatives introduce new risk. Professional risk management include quarterly reviews where you reassess your top risk. Annual comprehensive risk assessment where you do full assessment of all risk and identify new ones. Continuous monitoring through key risk indicators that show whether risk are trending up or down. And then regular risk reporting to leadership or risk status and treatment progress. So if you're trying to break into GRC or cybersecurity, understanding this process makes you immediately more valuable. According to CyberSeq, there are currently 469,930 open cybersecurity positions in the United States. Of those, approximately 78,000 specifically mention risk assessment as a required skill. The median salary for roles requiring risk assessment expertise is $98,000 to $135,000, depending on seniority and location. Now, if you want to do this real quick, here is what you should do to build your skill. Practice on realistic scenarios. 
take a hypothetical company and conduct a risk assessment following this process. Document everything as if you're doing it for real. Learn the tools, simple risk, iramba, or even structured spreadsheet. Familiarity with how GRC tools work make you more employable. Study real breaches when companies get compromised. Read the post-incident reports. Understand what risk materialized and what controls failed. This builds your risk identification instinct. Practice explaining risk in business terms. Don't just say SQL injection vulnerability. This is what you sell instead. Unvalidated user input in the web application could allow attackers to access our customer database, compromising 50,000 customer records and triggering notification requirements under state law. The ability to translate technical risk into business impact is what separates $75,000 analyst from $125,000 analyst. So when you interview for GRT roles and they ask, have you conducted risk assessment? You can now walk them through this exact process. You can show them a sample risk assessment that you've built. You can discuss how you would prioritize completing risk with limited resources. That is what gets you hired. Risk assessment isn't mystical. It's a structured process that you can learn and practice. So start building risk assessment today. For hypothetical scenarios, by the time you are interviewing, you will have portfolio pieces demonstrating your capability. Okay? And if this walkthrough showed you what GRC work actually looks like, subscribe for more content that prepares you for real cybersecurity careers. And in my usual manner, I hope I'm leaving you today better than I met you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the five day cybersecurity job challenge. This isn't just content you binge and forget. We're talking hands on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's where I personally help you avoid mistakes and land the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it.